Hi folks, welcome to the next edition of Serverless Crack. How are we all doing anyway? What's the story? Ah, good, good, good. I've had a I've had a day of they actually doing a lot of what we're about to talk about. <laughs> had a few of these scorp sessions on the go, so um, scorping, scorping away today. Scorping so. myself this week. Yeah, that's a good that's a good segue actually because we were we've been talking about this a wee bit this week, and um. I was at a, I was at an event earlier in the week. I was talking about something similar. There's a few practices that I think we've been collectively doing over the past few years. Like we've got SCORP, which is our way, our agile way of 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 doing well architected like every sprint with teams. We get the whole idea of engineering excellence and that whole idea of you know looking at what what you're doing and constantly improving. And even like the HPE high performing engineering as a way of of capturing key metrics about define good engineering good architecture and then talk about it as a team. And um, it's funny, even though the practices are out there, it's really just a mindset. Yeah. And and um, one of the first ideas we have to give credit to Matt Wynn many years ago, um, he introduced, introduced me anyway to this idea of um, the four disciplines of execution, which was which something we started off with, the idea of have a goal and gamify it and meet the improve it. Which was which is something I think we've followed a while up, but it's it's really just continuous improvement, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that is. It's, it's that mindset of continuous improvement, and just you know, no matter how small the improvement, it should be you know celebrated. It should be talked about. It should be you know um, championed. I guess right. And I, I guess if, if for people who don't know what Scorp is, do we want to talk about what the what, it's probably what... a good idea? Yeah. So uh, probably. If... A brief history, and I'll let Mike elaborate on it. Um, I think the Well Architected Framework probably came out what 2013, 2014, something like that. Wow. And I think initially it was seen as the AWS one. It was seen as a, like a, some people seen it as an audit that you would ask AWS to ask you a bunch of questions. It used to take a week. And we've been through a few of them, and it's a brilliant framework. But we thought it was mostly your idea, Mike. We thought, how could we make this like a a regular event per sprint? So Mike came up with the, the magic acronym of SCORP, so Security, Cost, <laughs> Operational Excellence, Reliability, and Performance. And then they brought Sustainability, so it became SCORPS. SCORPS. So we'll just do SCORP. But you kind of pioneered it, Mike, was in some of uh, your old squads. Yeah, and I, like at the time, I think the naming was fairly deliberate. You know, it was kind of like, you know, the more horrible the name, the more <laughs> likely it's going to stick in someone's head. Um, but yeah, not very creative, but it, it done the job. I... I think I think to your point, the idea was, you know, we would do like the well-architected reviews and we'd kind of do the milestones. But, you know, what I was finding is as, as you're kind of circling back around with teams and squads and finding how well-architected goes, they they were tending to revisit it with each milestone. And you're kind of feeling like you're, I feel like we were, we were losing a lot of ground between the milestones, you know, in terms of action and certain things. So the idea would be, you know, then we do our well-architected reviews that somehow makes its way onto the team's kind of backlog or, you know, we challenge the squad to kind of just make good decisions and, and sort of work towards anything that's kind of come out of those reviews and, and factor it in, you know, um, and, and just address them. And before you, you know, over time, as you say, like the, the notion of small wins and, um, you know, continuous improvement is really at the heart of it. Um, so we thought like, look, we'll meet on a cadence. We'll have well architected as the foundation and, you know, um, and then yeah. we'll, we'll have teams then just kind of, <clears throat> you know, um, get together. So we used to run, you know, the R Scorp sessions. We used to bring all the teams into a session, you know, like, so maybe like an hour and then you'd, each team would get 15 minutes or, you know, for you, if you have a lot of squads, you'd maybe run over an hour and a half, you'd run a couple of sessions. But the idea would be, you know, we don't solve the sale problem multiple times. Everyone's kind of really helped each other along. And, mm. you know, again, the community aspect of it as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an awesome kind of process and we've been we've stuck with it since we yeah you know, coined I think it. it also helped yeah. with the you know the fire hose of improvements and you know new features and new capabilities that the cloud providers are releasing. So you know mm. if you're only meeting to do a well architect review once a quarter, you know, once every six months or so, there's a huge amount of evolution in that ecosystem that you could have been taken advantage of. So Scorp is also because they're doing it regularly and continuously. It's a great way to inject in here. They've updated that service, or they've released this new security feature, or they've you know, there's just cost optimization you can take advantage of. 
So it was a great way of doing not only continuous improvement but continuous learning. And mm. typically, there'd be somebody on the squad or in the, one of the teams that says, "Oh, did you see this new thing come out?" We we looked at it over here, and then maybe the next day, the other team has adopted it as well. So yeah. That that's invaluable. That continuous improvement, like those those small victories, those yeah. small wins, just <clears throat> they, they compound over time, right? Yeah. And that's it. And I mean, it's in the front. It was the same actually with some of the way we started doing the threat modeling and even worldly mapping. Once you learn the basic, like technique, instead of getting a few people together and that community of, of saying let's let's actually have a discussion about this. It's not that you do it and publish it. You sit and co-create. And really, it's I think it's almost like a replacement for classroom-based learning. It doesn't work because stuff, as you say, our market's changing so fast. So you're getting together. And talking about like what's happening, and you're giving it a focus, which yeah. is either well architected or engineering excellence. Yeah. No, and that's it. And then I think um, this the scorp sessions themselves. So, like, so the idea, give an example, is you know we'll we'll bring representation from each of the squads, and then each squad kind of just tells their story, but they tell their story through their dashboard, right? And normally their dashboard is kind of organized around scorp. You know, like, so they'll have stuff on there from security perspective, cost, operational excellence, you know, reliability, resiliency, performance, um, you know, and they'll, and they'll tell their story. Now, we don't kind of go into everything, but the idea is like, um, you know, there'll be certain things teams are working towards or there's there's certain things, you know, like we'll, as well as that, we'll like kind of look at how we perform at the business level. And then everyone, you know, everyone's hearing that. And then you're, you know, it's like, what's, what's working well, what's not. And then, even when things fail, it's good because you know the idea is you're interested in what happened and you know how do we prevent it from happening mm. in the future and you know so it's the idea is it's 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 just a, it's an area where we can all be open and share and um and collaborate you know and as well as you know incrementally improving everything about our engineering ways of working our our workload our business outcomes you know all that's kind of baked in to it you know and you can you can really you can see it through the narratives um mm -hmm. as the teams are kind of well, talking to how they're again. progressing yeah we, there's definitely a compounding of the value of this as well you know those first initial sessions can be quite um awkward yeah. or quite quite difficult and teams might not understand what what we're trying to achieve but once they get into that cadence the good things build on top of each other similarly if you don't do it the bad things building each other and your software will decay your your solution will decay if you don't do these things regularly because you know you're not constantly maintaining it or seeing what you can improve yeah and that point it's the it's the trends you know like so we our our score dashboards that we you know we we would build would have like all the trend data so you're kind of looking at trends over extended periods and you can kind of you know it's it's really important you know if your team and you're maintaining several workloads for example you know, there's there's several techniques we've done in the past, like information radiators and things. You go into the office and you're, you know, but the idea is you you, you at some point in time you sit down, and you look at the and, and you examine the trends and tell your narrative, and you can and you can spot sort of degradations over time, and that does drive action. You know, like we should look at that mm. and should correct that. Same as like cost. You know, cost has a tendency to creep over extended periods of time. So again, you would you would ask questions around that and address certain mm. things. So. So yeah, it's really powerful, powerful way of kind of just maintaining your operation and you know making sure everything's as you expect. And do you think it's a lot easier now to provide that empirical data, those dashboards with real data, than it was maybe when we first started doing Scorp? I think the the, the dashboards are a lot more mature. I just to be a big blocker that collecting the data was always really complicated. We used to always push back against that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you used to think. Certainly, like we always kind of say, we, we we meet the teams where they're at. You know, if you go into any organization, there's going to be certain levels of experience and maturity and teams are going to be on a, you know, in terms of the spectrum, certain teams will be more evolved than others. And, you know, um, even starting with a Confluence page where you're manually collecting certain <laughs> bits of information yeah. and data and telling your story is a good start, you know, and it's fine. Yeah. I remember years ago, I, I was going to, I think it was an XP conference, and I was trying to work out what's the best way to do dashboards for this. And I mm. had it in my head, we'd put them in TVs and stuff and be really fancy. And I was thinking, like, can you get a graphic designer? And um, I can't remember the girl's name, but she was saying, no, just do it on the whiteboard, just draw it. Just make yeah. it really easy to change. The more, the more fancy it is, the harder it is to change, and nobody will ever change it. Just draw it up and make it a lo-fi dashboard. And, and 
give people permission to change it. But that's a massive thing. It's the it's 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 the atmosphere around these sessions. The good mm. crack, you know, you're like, I always say to people, they say, Oh, it's look at this metric, it's six, is that good or bad? It's like, I don't care if it's good or bad. Is, is are you happy with it? Yeah. And is it better than the last one? Like what was mm. the trend going? And are you happy? I don't not my number, your number. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it's it's holding, uh, it's not holding the mirror up like but saying, No, this is your workload. What what do you want to happen here? You might say, well, this is a really useless measure. I'll take it away. Get rid of it. Exactly. That's one of the big things is that psychological safety and meeting teams where they are with the context that they're within. You're not yeah. comparing one team to another. You're not comparing yeah. anybody no. else's dashboard to anyone else. It's all about the journey that they're on. If they're making marginal improvements, marginal gains, every 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 review, every every scope session, that's brilliant. That's great for them. That should be celebrated. It shouldn't be, well, mm. why haven't you done what this other squad have done? That other squad could have started three years ago. Yeah. Have all the, all the... Well, they could have a different workload. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, let's. I mean, there's a couple of key mechanisms here that we're kind of getting to. I mean, I think, and we could just maybe list them. Like, like having a dashboard is really important. Yeah. And having that really simple, that you talk about numbers. There's empirical evidence. You trying. sit and say, well, let's see the numbers and your trends, see which way they're going. I think the most important is the psychological safety. I always start off by saying, listen, folks, this is for you guys. I don't really care what you've done. You know what I mean? Let's just have a good conversation and and meet the team. A, sec, a third one is meet the team where they are. You know what I mean? If a team are really busy with production defects and they're completely slammed, it's okay to say, hey, let's just call this. Let's not do this today. These are too busy. You know what I mean? You know, figure out what, what, the, what the vibe is with the team. You can't beat up teams over engineering excellence and this type of stuff. You need to sort of encourage them. Um, I think bias for action is a good one. Um, you always want teams trying. You always try and sort of, you know, appreciate or give credit. The engineers, you're thinking about stuff, thinking, I'm not really happy with this, but I don't really know what it is. Brilliant. At least you're thinking about it. Yeah, and I, I think yeah, but... putting up multiple teams together in the session helps with that, but it almost de it for them. It's like, oh, well, we've done this over here. And then the other team can go, well, I'll have a bad fraction and try yeah. and do the same thing. It sort of removes the, the mystery or the risk from, from them adopting that thing. The other thing with yeah. bias for action too, and I just want to add a point that you're doing, as we mentioned earlier, you know, the, the dashboard is psychological safety and meeting teams where they're at. And, you know, and I and I feel like sometimes it can be like we we certainly talk about it all the time. Like when you're st initially starting out as Scorp, and obviously you'd have to come in. We, we would say we're Scorp champions and we'll come in and facilitate and we'll help teams set up. And, but it's their process and they, you know, we'll get at the position where it's self almost self-sustaining and they'll run it. But the others, what I always kind of find, the first, the first handful of sessions are quite hard because everyone's kind of got their own, but then over time yep. you start to see it takes one soon as one squad starts to run with it, you know, and then you get that positive yep. kind of peer pressure, you know, like it's a it's a good pressure, you know, like well, one team they start to kind of add a wee bit to their dashboard and talk to it, and then you start to see other teams following suit. And then before you know it, you know, it's it's actually a really enjoyable session. There's so much good yeah. stuff happening. Um that it's you know I think a great sign, a great sign of healthy scorp is the dashboards are all different. Yeah. No, they put similar goals, but they're all different because teams decide to measure it in a different way. And that's I mean, the yeah, that's the one thing to watch for. I always don't like it when people come in with pre-cooked. You know, if someone yeah, tries yeah, to start yeah. a session, here's your, use this dashboard. You're kind of going, hmm, no. What's your tell your team? What's the what's your story? What's the what do you want to tell? Yeah, you know. Although we do have starter templates. <laughs> yeah, start them off. I think you start people off, but then give them permission to change it. Yeah, yeah um, encourage them to change. I mean, unless let's. let's you boil it all down. We talked about these like SCORP engineer accents or HPE and why we do these things. It's about the atomic habits. Yep. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think there's a lot of like software factories or feature factories, where people just knocking stuff out at a rate of knots. Yep. But there's no there's no ticket to improve. Do you know what I mean? You yep. you want to have an atomic habit of looking at your work. It's a bit of craftsmanship, looking at your work and trying to make something better to be a better engineer. And that's what we're you like you think that's what we're all trying to do in a way. I think so. so. Um, so that's a crack. That's a funny one. Um, we've been scorping like mad this week, so it's good fun. Good, uh, very enjoyable. So have we look at the uh, the serverless age on Twitter and uh, the um, serverless crack podcast? Give us a wee like or a subscribe. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bye.